Hello and welcome back to this new episode of the survival series for the zombie arcade shooter series. In this episode, I said we'd be doing reloading, but I'm trying to figure out how to do that as a proper class. Um, so that's going to take a bit longer than expected. So instead, what I thought we could do was move on to adding some more interaction for our pickups. And what we're going to do is have it so when our enemy over here dies, they're going to drop a pickup for us on a very random occasion. So to do that, we're going to go to our pickups and we're going to create a new pickup axer for each type. So I'm going to do a health drop. I'm going to double click that to open it. So it's just making a new actor in my blueprints and I'm going to add two components. I'm going to add a static mesh, which we call health mesh. And then I'm going to add a Sophia collision, which I'll just call collision. And I'll parent that to my mesh. Now we're going to choose from my static mesh. I'm going to choose my health pickup. I'm going through this very quickly as we've already done this in the previous tutorials. And there we have our pickup. Now let's open up our previous pickup um, template. And I'm going to take my add rotation function. So I'm going to just go to that. Control C everything in here. Then my event graph, I'm going to add a new function called add rote. Control V and it will paste everything except the function name and input from the one I copied all the nodes from. And I'm going to have to swap out this variable here, the K rotation. And we'll set it to the same. And then in the add rotation, don't forget we're going to need another float named delta seconds or delta time, which we'll multiply our k rotation by. And instead of having pick up there, we get our health mesh. And I'm actually going to unparent my collision from my health mesh so that I'm not continuously rotating my sphere collision which will need some new computation to calculate its collision radius even though all it's doing is rotating. Okay so now we're going to add on our event tick the add rotation node and put delta seconds into the add rotation. And now when this drops, it will rotate like R1 on this stand does. So now we also need to create a new function called picked up. And in this case, our picked up one will be much simpler because all it's gonna do is restore the player's health and then destroy itself. So we can go here and we can go restore health because in our event graph, as you can see, when we overlap and it's not picked up, then we just do restore health if we're using a health pickup. So I'm gonna go to my restore health function and do the same again. Control C, Control V, We're calling our get player health from our player library and our restore player health from our player library. But one more thing we'll have to do is remake our local variable amount to restore as an integer and give it the same amount it would have in the last pickup. So we're just copying and pasting and doing this for a while. So again, that's why I'm just going through this quickly and we don't need picked up. Also, what I'm going to do, you can do this differently if you like, is I'm going to have it so if you have maximum health, you don't pick up the pickup just yet. And another thing we're going to do is create two new variables. What we're going to do is we're going to have, well actually I'm going to just create one, and we're going to call lifetime as a float. And I'm going to set this to about 10 seconds. 
and on event tick, I'm going to set this to lifetime. So I'm going to get minus another float. We're going to minus the delta seconds. We're going to minus delta seconds off of lifetime. And I've just double clicked the line here to make this a bit neater. And we're going to set that. And then we're going to check, and we're doing this every frame, to see if lifetime is less than or equal to 0, 0.0. And if it's true, then I want to destroy the actor. And that's because we don't want our pickup to last forever. We just want it to last for a little while. Okay. So now we also need to do collision. Add on component begin overlap. And what we want to do is check if our other actor or actor has tag. So dragging off the other actor, and we're going to want to check if the tag is player with a capital P. It is cap sensitive, so make sure you do know how it's spelt. Okay, holding B and left click to bring in a branch. We do a return value to check if the condition is true or false. If it's true, then we want to call our pick top function. And when it's been picked up, destroy the actor. This means it gets one use and is destroyed as soon as it's picked up and has restored the player's health. Now we need to get into the more complicated bit of spawning it. So to do that, we're gonna go into our enemy health class. Because we might have multiple enemy types, we're going to want to make sure we can just call this for all of them and we don't have to add it to the enemy code itself. So we're going to create in the enemy health a new function called check spawn number. And we're going to use an input. Uh, sorry, we're not going to use an input. We're going to right click and do random float. And we can just use random float and not in range because if you hover over it, it gives you a comment saying it returns a random float between 0 and 1. And we're going to set this to a local variable, which I'm going to call RNG for random number generator. And we'll set our RNG equal to this new random float. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if this number is greater than or equal to another number and use getting a branch will check if this is true or false. So for testing purposes, I'm going to check if this number is greater than or equal to 0 0.1. And this is going to be the rate at which it spawns. So this means we have a 9 in 10 chance of it spawning. That's quite high, obviously we don't want that, you probably want more of like a 2 in 10, but for testing purposes, you could even set it to 0, it's to make sure it spawns. I'm going to leave it at 0 0.1 because I want to make sure it doesn't always spawn. And I'm going to create another local variable called b will spawn. No, b will spawn, not span. And that's a boolean with its default value false. If it's true, set it to true. If it is less than that number, set it to false. And then we want a return node using a boolean, like it's just given us here, saying b will spawn, or b spawn pickup. Uh, b stands for boolean, just in case you didn't know. It's a naming convention. Now click get for our will spawn, and that's the value we're going to return. In the next video, we'll be connecting this to our death function and then checking if we are indeed spawning a pickup and then generating which pickup to spawn randomly. So stick around if you want to see that. Thanks, guys. Bye.